Antibiotics are some of the oldest, cheapest, and most important drugs on the market, but right now they can be very hard to come by. Meg Terrell looks at what's causing this prescription drug crisis. Meg? Yeah, guys, if you've tried to get antibiotics for your kids over the last you know, winter season, you've probably seen how hard it is to come by amoxicillin. That is one of many antibiotics that is currently in shortage. More than three dozen right now on the FDA shortages list. And antibiotics are some of the drugs most frequently found to be in shortage. We've got a, a graphic here to show you the classes of drugs which you most commonly find on this list. Antimicrobials are at the top there. It's been a tough respiratory season, so that is contributing to this, but that is not the only reason. Uh, it's emblematic of a really bigger problem with generic drugs in general. You can see that we're at a historic high right now when it comes to drug shortages. That looks at the number of shortages over the last five years. There are a few reasons why this happened. Antibiotics in particular are usually very old drugs, so they're very inexpensive. So there isn't the incentive there for manufacturers to keep their supply chains really robust. There are also really murky supply chains. We don't know where all the ingredients are made, so there's not a lot of transparency into what is going on. And a lot of this happens outside the United States. We talked with Eric Tishy from the End Drug Shortages Alliance about some of these factors. Here's what he told us. There is a high cost to cheap drugs. In a competitive market, sometimes the profit margins can be very thin, and it could lead manufacturers to exit the market. If something happens with that limited number of manufacturers, that can be um, a, a way that we end up with shortages. And then there's not a lot of incentives for manufacturers to jump in. So we did see this get exacerbated with the pandemic, but it wasn't caused by the pandemic. This has been going on there for decades. There is a high cost to and it cheap gotten drugs. a lot worse. So is this a global problem or is this a U.S. problem that also has to do with how we, I don't know, run our medical system? Well, it's not a uniquely U.S. problem, but it is especially bad here. You do hear about drug shortages happening in other countries, though, particularly the U.K., uh, but we do run into issues a lot because our generic drugs are actually cheaper in the U.S. than they are in other countries, even though our branded drugs are way more expensive. I mean, I, I think about this. I think about the baby formula shortages mm. that went on for way too long and are only just starting to be corrected a little bit now. What is the policy that's in place, or, or is there discussion about future policy to try and change this dynamic? Definitely. The FDA is looking at this really closely, both in terms of drug shortages and the formula shortages. A lot of it has to do with the infrastructure, the plants that are making these things, the kind of inspections that FDA does, the kind of oversight it has, how much information you know we get about the quality of things. That is something that a lot of the experts are pushing for. Can they share more of that quality information so it's not just a pass-fail? You actually know how good the quality of the manufacturing is behind things you buy. Meg Terrell, thank you for joining us on set with such an important story. Thank you, I appreciate guys. it.